Welcome to another episode of the Love Not Fear podcast, where we explore the power of acting out of love and not fear in business and in our personal life. And let me set the stage for our guest today. I'm very grateful to have Jeremy Kubicek on the podcast, who just released a new book called The Communication Code, but he wrote a bunch of other books and it's really exciting. I've been digging into his work this morning and I'm quite mind blown how cool of a how cool this content is. And you also built a platform very similar to the platform that we've built up coach. So I'm really excited to dig in to your new book and also the previous books with you. Thank you for being on the show, Jeremy. So excited. I love, I love the idea of love, not fear. This is so fun. So yeah, the idea of love, not fear in business and in the, before the call, we chat a little bit and you also had like a, a sim similar uh, idea or, or mindset on this. And I think it's, it's a really important, Thing. If you want your business or life to be run well, it's it's really important to to act out of love and not out of fear. And communication is one really big thing when it comes to this interpersonal relationships to to make them run well. Uh, could you give us some context on like why you wrote the book? Yeah. So published? yeah, I I, uh, I write books mainly out of my own issues. I'm like, hey, I'm struggling with this, and I try to solve it. And so in the case of the communication code, I was having an issue with my business partner because we were, we were not, our expectations were missing, and our communication was faulty. And so we went to solve it. Every time we have an issue, we just go to solve it. And it's been really fascinating. And so that's really what it was. So the idea of the communication code was communication has expectations attached to it. Every time you communicate, you're expecting something. And we figured out that every expectation has a code word. And if you can figure out what the code word is to that person's expectations, then you're going to meet their expectations and communicate effectively. When you don't, you miss it. And that's when walls come up. That's when fear comes up, insecurity, trauma, all types of other issues. I, I agree, but the question in my mind is how do I really figure out what the other person wants? I mean, kind of like bluntly ask, like, you know, yeah. what 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 is so what, we, what do you want to get out of this? So we figured out that there are in essence five code words. Mm -hmm. And it would be so nice if you could give me the code word before. And if you share your code word, then now I've gotten a clue. Uh almost like the Enigma code. I'm cracked the code and can figure out what the issue is. So in the case of, uh, of me we, and Steve, my business partner, we figured out there's five. There's people want to either celebrate, they want care, they want you to clarify, they want to collaborate, or possibly they want critique. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that, that they want uh, typically. So these are the communication codes. So if I'm talking to you and I know the code language, I go, hey, David, I'm super excited today. I've, I've been working hard on this deal and and I want to celebrate because we close and I just want to celebrate and that's it. I don't, I don't really want to collaborate today. I don't need anything else. I just want to celebrate. Are you cool with that? Let's go to lunch. And now I've given you the code word. And if you're a hmm. good citizen, <laughs> you'll <laughs> you'll know that's the expectation. And then, you know, if if we have a good relationship and you you might then say hey maybe not now but later i'd love to collaborate on this a little bit more Is, would that be cool and now we've gotten the opportunity to use a language to unlock or at least meet expectations yeah i um i heard the story you shared on another podcast and i think your your the deal wasn't the way that you expected it to be but it was still cool and your business partner got uh went into the clarification slash critique mode and this is something that you know we, we kind of like you know been, been butting heads yeah. and uh yeah and so think of every relationship you have every single relationship there's an opportunity and there's a tendency that we have so like with my spouse, my wife, Kelly, I have a tendency to want to celebrate and collaborate. She mm -hmm. has a tendency to want to um, uh, critique and collaborate. 
Well, mm-hmm. if I don't want collaboration, then we're gonna we're gonna miss each other. Or if she doesn't want celebration, we're gonna miss miss each other. So it's really really important to find out and customize it. What specifically do you want from your like? What does care look like? What does celebration look like? And by giving that common language, now you've gotten the opportunity to potentially eliminate negativity, frustrations, uh, miscommunication, so on and so forth. It's super powerful when you as a couple or in an organization, when you have the same mental models. That's what, what we do in, in my business, we kind of like share mental models so people are on, on the same page. It makes it so much easier if you you know, sh- sh- give out these tools and then everybody kind of plays the same game. And if I say like, no, this is, this is a whatever coming now, you know what, what's going on. So I guess this is, so the best use case for um, this is, I guess, in in existing teams to have to share the same models to kind of like know what the language is. Or do you also figure out when you talk to, to a stranger, I guess you can apply it as well you just have to yeah a little more guessing what this person really wants from from yeah well you want to get really good with the key core relationships in your life once you've gotten really good there then you can scale it and figure it out so uh inside teams here because here's what tends to happen people go oh you know bob that's just bob that's just who he is (laughs) and bob never changes because he's not self-aware that he critiques first Mm -hmm. And there's certain personalities, especially if you're a thinker, um, which is a large percentage of the population, uh, you know, 50%. If you're a thinker, you'll have a tendency to critique because what you're doing is you're taking an idea and someone that brings an idea out here and they go, what do you think of my idea? (laughs) And yeah, and we shoot holes at the idea, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're like, you know, that's fine in their mind, but a lot of feelers will put their idea right over their heart. Mm. And then you shoot ideas and then you see blood and the thinkers like that was not logical. Why did you do that? Put it out here. So to critique first is an issue because a lot of people don't want critique themselves. So you have to think, uh, do you want to others as they would want done? Mm, yes, kind of yes. The platinum rule, uh, which <laughs> yes. is, is basically what would they want to be able to connect and lower their walls? And so, again, a lot of people will miss it, and then they'll, they, they'll be miffed going, what's up with him? I don't, I don't get it. What's wrong? He must, have, he must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Like, no, actually, you critiqued when he was just needing care. Mm. Or you critiqued when he was wanting you to clarify first because you critiqued on something that wasn't accurate. So if you can clarify first before you critique, then you'll be golden. So that's mm. it's it's common objective language that would help um, unlock relationships and ensure that we're communicating effectively. It's so important, especially in business. Uh, my my mother always said, "Be hard in the case and soft with the person." So if I want to critique you, I would always you know make you feel really good, but then almost like the management pushes them, which I kind of like give you like, "Hey, you're amazing at this, yeah. dude. This shit sucks," and then. You're also amazing here. So kind of like wrap it into, you know, so people don't feel crushed afterwards. You know, so I think mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's another one um, to look at. When you, you it's a celebrate care, clarity, collaboration, and critique. Do you also have an order to kind of go through? Let's say I present my new project. You don't know what I want from this. And first you celebrate like, hey, David, you did an amazing job with this. And then like, do you want to collaborate type of thing? Do you want like, you know, kind of test out this waters, so then kind of go from collaboration into Critique. So you were you were showing me up coach, okay? So mm-hmm. uh, earlier, which is fascinating, I lo- really like it. So you were showing it to me. Um, so if I were to say to you, okay, so David, so what would you like for me? Mm. Do you want me? Do you want collaboration? Do you want me to celebrate? Um, what what would be really helpful? And if you know the language, mm. then you can give it to me. If you don't know the language, I can lead you because mm-hmm. I'm leading you to ensure that I meet your expectations. Or at least know your expectations. So and you have if some, you say, some, no, some standardized questions that you, people kind of like always use to kind of reveal what's, yeah, what's going on. Perfect softball tee up. In my book, <laughs> I give it in the communication code, uh, every chapter. So if you're not very good at celebrating, for instance, 
uh, I basically created it. We created a chapter on how to do celebration when you're not good at celebration. Uh, how, how to critique without being critical. Um, mm -hmm. How to ask clarifying questions. So very, how do you care when it's not natural for you to care? Those types of um, specifics. I will, I hope you have an audible, audio book version. I will definitely consume your book books yeah just for the ce celebration piece because i'm not good at celebrating okay good next okay good next <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> and it's not 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 fair and, towards the team or towards my, my well spouse. here's the here's the other beautiful part about the communication code if you get if you really get it then you get on the next level which is customizing it because mm -hmm. now what we're doing is we're saying okay specifically what so not just celebration what type of celebration so mm -hmm. like if you were to ask me um when we celebrate i want to i want to celebrate i like to celebrate but i don't want to celebrate me mm -hmm. i want to celebrate we mm -hmm. so i'm celebrating the team i want an opportunity to celebrate because it's an opportunity for me to affirm the strengths in other people so i want to do a lunch with our team i don't want to celebrate me that's the last thing i want Mm -hmm. uh, whereas other people are like, no, I'm fine. Celebrate me. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's, you can customize it, you know? So if, if I were to ask you and we went through, uh, let's say we got really knew each other. I go, what are the top two things that you want from me? Uh, with Jeremy, I want you to clarify first. And then I want your full collaboration because I think you get me like, okay, great. How specifically would you like to clarify? And what are my boundaries to on collaboration? So by establishing that, then now I'm really, truly a valuable asset to you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I'm making your world better because I'm now literally listening to you, asking clarifying questions. And then by the time that I'm collaborating, you're trusting my collaboration because you know that I get you. That's trust. That's building true depth in communication. Trust. And most people don't do it. Can you... You also have a personality test in your uh, in your platform in your in your uh, giant OS. By the way, super cool. Check out giantos.com and uh, is it giantworldwide.com? That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, can you map these um, code words, or is it almost like a personality type? For example, I have a condition called aphantasia. I have uh, I'm hyper logical. I'm very low on the emotional sides, um, and so. I love critique, just like hit me up. Plus I'm German and have no emotions. And also like, just like hit me hard. I want to improve it. I want to make it better. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful if you critique me, you know? So can, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe even map it to the personality type. So you can, I know like, hey, Bob, I can just like be like versus like with Steven, I'm like always uh, coming. Yeah, well, me. so here's, here's how you can do it. N knowing that like, here's my question. Do pioneers, uh, we call them pioneers. Pioneers would be uh entj and uh Myers -Briggs ENTP. language. okay ntp that's a pioneer connector in our language so does a pioneer do you want care ever well of, of course you do of course i do yeah but what care looks like to you looks very very different than a nurturer mm. so so what you've done is you're basically just tailoring the the words around the personality Hmm. So to celebrate to you, well, what does celebration look like to you? Do you ever want to celebrate anything? I mean, like high five, we did a great job. Now let's work on another thing. <laughs> there you go. But there, that's a form of celebration because it's an emotional, uh, you know, we did it. We, we accomplished it. Okay, next thing. But you still took a moment to high five. So hmm. If that's all it is, then that's all you share, right? But, so, but also in terms of caring, like my in my world, caring would be if you give me really unfiltered, harsh critique so I can get better. You know, this was like, oh, dude, Jeremy, like, you know, it's not scared to step on my toes or potentially, you know, offend me that, you know, he may have negative consequences by being so transparent with me, you know? So it's, for me, this is like, I, I very value and appreciate this. That's know? right. So I guess so like, that's, a, that's a great example. Uh, for my business partner, he is the same personality as you, Pioneer Connector, ENTP. Uh, Steve wants a safe place where he can vent and know that there's no judgment and no drama. So he'll, he'll say he's getting the poison out. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes he'll just talk to me and like, oh, I'm so, I wish they, why didn't they, this is frustrating. And I just listen and go, yep. Yeah. Or 
I go, do you want feedback? Do you want, you want critique on that? And he's like, no, I just needed to say it. I'm like, great, we're done. Mm. And then that showing care. So that's the beauty of it. It's like you take the words based on your personality. What does it mean? But then here's the most important part. Can you get out of yourself? Can you love someone? We use the definition of love at Giant. Love means to fight for the highest possible good of those you lead. So to fight for the highest possible good of the other person would mean that I'm, I know what their expectations are and I'm going to work to try to connect to those if they're reasonable mm. and rational. And so that's, that's kind of the whole idea of, again, do unto others as they would want done. Yes, yes, yes. Platinum rule. I really like this. Because golden rule, if I treat everybody the way I want to be treated, I will not be very popular. You know? <laughs> 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 That's it. Uh, um, very cool. Uh, how do you, what's the best way to implement this in a team? Because like my main focus is like organization development. I'm a total yeah. org so, nerd. Ideally so also start. through, yeah, please go for it. Start with, um, you actually start with it in order and go, hey, we're going to do a team meeting. We're going to celebrate to start. What do we want to celebrate that's happened in the last week since our last meeting? Mm -hmm. Hey, we got this such and such business. This We finished this. Awesome. High five, high five, high five. We move on. Care. Uh, is everyone, anyone need anything? Are we good? Mm -hmm. Is there anything we need to know about in the organization? Yeah, Susan's grandfather passed away. We just do, need to be mindful of that. Thanks. Got it. Let's send some flowers. Okay. Clarify. Okay. Today we're going to be working on this. Let's clarify. Does everyone make sense? Does this make sense to everyone? Now we're into full collaboration. Now let's go to work on whatever. And then you won't even need critique typically uh, mm -hmm. because by the time you've gone through all of it, there's you've kind of got everyone aligned on the same page. So that's a way to use it for team meetings. Uh, and a lot of companies are using it in that way. Uh, but then the interpersonal dynamics would then be to know when I'm meeting with you one-to-one -one, or I'm having a conversation. And so then I ask the question, okay, David, so what is it you're wanting from me? And then you're giving me the code word. I need you to clarify and I want your full mm. critique. I'm like, That's great. Really cool. Now you've given me, you've given me full permission, but now I'm aligned to meet your expectations and it's exactly what I want to be able to do. So I, now we're thinking. I think you could almost enforce this if you, I assume you're familiar with the EOS, uh, Entrepreneur yep. Operating System. They have the yep. level 10 meeting, so you could kind of like, you know, like celebrate this, the good news section. So you could kind of call it celebrate this part in, in, the, in the meeting agenda and then you could like, you know, care, like whatever, news, news are there. What you need to do. so this would be a way because I'm, I'm i'm a big fan of systematizing things so you cannot miss it you know so yes. i think it's, it's a it's a cool way do you have this in your system like a like an agenda type thing we have uh we have different recommendations in our in our operating system and different styles that people that use again it goes back to styles some people really love that uh the guardians and pioneers and some other personalities are a little bit more easy flowing, right? So we just kind of let it, we give recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm more like, I'm, I consider myself a positive bully. If I think it's good for you, I push you to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. I also really enjoy your peace index. Could you elaborate on, on this yeah. one? I think there's a yeah, so huge application for personal and, and, and business as well. Yeah, so for those listening, we, um, Steve and I, Steve Cochran, we built 70 plus tools and the communication code is one of those tools. And then we write a book about them and the peace index is another tool. So we just created these tools that um, are mainly for cynical know-it-all adults who don't read much anymore <laughs> because we realized that you had to be visual. It needs to be so sticky that then you can learn it quickly and apply it and teach it to someone else. So the idea that we were finding was, especially during COVID, is engagement numbers are dropping like crazy and people were leaving, you know, the, for another job just off money. And what we found was like levels of peace are really low. And uh, so peace is a directly, peace and hope play together. Hope is about tomorrow. Peace is about today. 
Hmm. Hope is about the, how you feel about the future. Peace is how you're feeling at the moment. And so every person has a number over their head. And we're like, oh my goodness, it's so obvious. You have a number. Couldn't we quantify it and give a number that people could actually take an assessment and understand what's why they're off in that moment? So I wrote a book called The Peace Index. And so it's basically five Ps. It's uh, you take a test one through 100 uh, on purpose, people, place, personal health, and then provision. And provision would be earnings, uh, how much you make money, uh, enough to, you know, do you have enough to live on to keep the lifestyle that you have? So um, I think it's also really, really powerful. Uh, I, I, I took the notes here as well. And when I, uh, when you explained the provisions last time, it makes so much sense if you rationalize, like, do I have enough to live? This should be like, you know, then I'm, I'm happy versus like, I'm not Mark Zuckerberg, I'm depressed, you know, like kind of like giving yeah, this like, right. Not like, what you, you know, want, but what you, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not what you want to have, it's what you need. Do you have enough? Do you have your needs met? And so if you do, then you go, okay, so if I ask you, and we're not going to do it right here in front of the world, uh, 8 million people here on your podcast, but, um, <laughs> but to go, David, uh, if I said, what's your purpose, one through a hundred, and you gave a number and you so let's 95. just say 95. Okay. There we go. I can play. Let's just, let's just do it. I'll, I'll give you your number. I'll, just, I'll do it while you're saying, so we got a 95 plus people. What number would you say you are? How, how good do you feel about the people in your life? Yes. The top 10 people that's around you? I'd say an 85. Okay. And sometimes that number can go down. One, one kid could do something really stupid at school and that number drops, right? Or there's an my, issue. My, my wife the... just went through uh, breast cancer and chemo and she's like, recovering. She's not feeling at her best, but I'm very grateful that she's better, but she's not at, at her A game yet. You know, so hence, no, not. There you go. Yeah. Um, place is where you, it's your spaces, it's your office and your living, your house and your location and neighborhood. It's probably also like an 80, 80, 80, 90. 80. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And, then, and it can be 82.4, whatever. It's up to you. And then we go to personal health. It's mind, body, spirit. I'm very much on my A game. So I'll say almost 95. 95. Okay. And then provision was your last one. So 100. Okay. 100. So then you divide by five and you're setting at a solid 91. So, Beautiful. and it's really, it's really hard to be in the nineties. Um, I was in 91. Yeah. I took it yesterday with a group and I was 91 as well. It's really, really difficult, but there's, let's say a month from now, you could be in the seventies because one issue, uh, mm, something's exactly. not working out like you hoped. So what you've done is you create this, this peace index and then you have a hope meter, which is basically what level mm, are you under a hundred? How good do you feel about your future? How hopeful are you about your tomorrow? One through a hundred. And you go, you know, I'm at a 90 and my hope meter and a 91 my peace index. Okay. Then you probably have enough to give away to other people. Hmm. But if you hmm. don't, if you don't, if those numbers are low, and this goes back to your podcast, love, not fear. If they're, if your hope levels fear, then it's probably going to affect your peace number then all of a sudden you might be in a fear-based living situation. You might be in fear-based living or fear-based leadership. And when you're fear-based, you spread fear to other people. Mm. And it all of a sudden it takes uh, your influence goes down. You start to scurry and worry. And when you have worry and anxiety, it starts to affect your body. And then your system's eventually could lead to all types of negative ramifications that's beautiful thank you thank you very much Rose. it makes so much sense and with my original course managing happiness or like the idea with with love not fear is that with managing happiness which we're also going to roll into love not fear now is to give people the tools to be on your personal a game because if you have your habits straight if you have your um, business personal and uh, family if, if this is good um, if you eat right, if you sleep right, if you take care of yourself and you figure out what's your purpose, mission, and vision, and you work on things that you're excited to work on, it's much easier to be even keeled and to be strong. And even if your partner has a bad day and she yells at you, you will be able to stay in a place of love and not be like irritated and triggered and just kind of like 
you know, explode. So the sky, uh, the idea. So I really 100% um, agree with you that if you're, if you're, peace index is down, you're more prone to, to act out of fear, not love. Do you have it systematized that you, when people take this, I guess you, you more recommend, like, do, do you have like, does your application ping people on a regular basis? Like, hey, do your weekly yeah, you check-in of peace index? In our coaches, we've got roughly about 900 or so coaches, they'll teach this and it's in a system so you can actually keep track of your peace index and where it's been and you can do it as much as you want. We have certain, some people who take it uh, daily. I think mm -hmm. that might be a little much, <laughs> uh, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, but what it's just a good, and it's really great language to talk to your teenagers or spouse mm -hmm. or my wife and I will do date night and we're like, Hey, tonight let's do, let's do a place, place date. So we'll go on a date and just talk about place or we'll just talk mm. about people or whatever. Oh, it's so, so good. So then you take your lowest one, which one is your lowest, and then you can do the change equation on it. You're like, why are you dissatisfied? Mm. What's your vision again? Is that vision realistic? And then what are you going to do with it? And then it logically can lead you to go, hey, I'm going to work on that number. Because most people, they're not at peace, but they don't know why. Mm. And they it's just, so good. It's so good because you also give like... A a framework or like you give some boundaries on like okay what is the thing and then you can like be solution or you can kind of really figure out something of this versus just kind of like worrying or like being in, in a bad mode mood versus like picking okay what's the thing this is the thing let's attack it let's find solutions for this and then you actually you improve your life and, and your your uh your peace index that's so that's good it. yeah and so is the application of your what's the majority of your tools are they built for personal development are they built for organization development are they built for families because uh, similar with, with what we built with love not fear it's kind of applicable kind of all over the place and i'm having a hard time to kind of like put it into uh categories. so our main our main business is b2b so it's for organizations to use so like google and microsoft and pfizer and biogen these companies will use it for their teams because it builds um really effective um team performance because we make team leaders more effective. We, we focus on relational intelligence. And so we're, we're basically helping team leaders become more relationally intelligent. In this era, in this world, this is a key issue because of authenticity, the next level generation, so on and so forth. So we're making them way more effective. So you might be really good at EOS and you're using it, but no one likes you. <laughs> so therefore, you're really good with the EOS. No one likes you. Therefore, you're going to get compliance. You're just not, still not going to get their engagement, their best. Well, so what if you could use EOS and people like you? Like, what, what would happen if you could actually elevate your relational intelligence? So uh, that's where we focus on. Uh, but to your point, everyone we know takes it and uses it at home. So it, hmm. it plays really well with kids. And um, so I've taken it. I've actually... Uh, I built another business, kind of like you, you have multiple businesses. I have multiple, but one of my businesses is with my son and it's called sixsummers.com. And my son, I trained my kids on these tools. Mm -hmm. And so Will graduated from college. He goes, can I, I want to partner with you. Let's build what you did for me for kids. So we have six summers in your teenage years, 13 to 18, before kids usually transition and leave. So how do you help parents to prepare the kids to launch? And so mm. we basically built a business using these concepts and premises uh, to help uh, to help scale and and grow. So yeah, so that's what we've um, uh, that's what we we've, we've been working on, trying to learn how to uh, really affect every circle of influence. That's so cool. So we have so many overlap similarities. It, it's really funny. Managing happiness initially was a course for applying business principles to your family life because when our daughter was born we started having some friction and i thought like oh because i'm a business nerd let's bring actually we had a meeting about roles and responsibilities at my business and then we came home and emma had a full diaper and i told my wife like hey honey i think emma has a full diaper and she got really upset because she thought i'm telling her to change the diaper and i was like it's not my intention and i thought why do we fight about this now and then i realized like oh we never talked about roles and responsibilities Next morning, we wrote them down. This took away 80% of the friction we had. And then we apl applied all the other things for business, like mission, vision, regular meetings, color, all that jazz. This is how Managing Happiness was born initially. So for 
for families. And then I switched it to leadership. Uh, and now we're with, with Love and Fear, we're working into the organization development realm as well. So that's, yeah, that's yeah that's good. Do you know, good. Um, do you know 18 Summers? I don't. 18 Summers will come. It's um, a friend of mine, they wrote um, a book called Family Board Meetings. And the okay. idea is that you go on a board meeting with your kid um, every quarter and the kid defines what it wants to do. The rules are it has to be minimum four hours, ideally overnight, um, no screens, no movie, no, no cell phones. And you do something together, not with your spouse, just you and your kid. You know, to kind of like have this intimate bonding. Thingy. And there, there are things called 18, 18 summers. So, cool. Because yeah, you have great. 18 summers with your kids until they kind of move out and you want to kind of like, yeah. get them yeah. out most, most of this. I love it. Yeah. So cool. If I met you earlier, I could have like not built a lot of things and like use, use more, <laughs> more synergies. <laughs> um, in terms of acting out of love and not fear, what do you think is the, the number one thing you can do for yourself? in business and um, uh, in relationships to act more out of love. Yeah, so and I can again, like you... separate it, maybe of like a, a trip for yeah. a tip, tip for culture, a tip for relationship and a tip for individuals. Uh, um, so to fight for the highest possible good, that's, mm. that's a, that is a, a key component. What does it mean to fight for the highest possible good of yourself? What's it mean to fight for the highest possible good of another person? whoever that is, right? So that's the, um, that in and of itself is its own game. So what is it they need? Where are they right now? How do I get them? And in essence, what do they need support and what do they need challenge? Mm -hmm. So is I think uh, fighting and love, we like to put them together because it's, it's an intensity. Because I'm going to bring support to you, but I'm also going to bring challenge to you because I want mm -hmm. the best for you. I want mm -hmm. the highest level for you. And that to me is uh, a, a great way to, to provide the appropriate love. Interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. If it's like, if, if it's just love misunderstood and you treat your kid like little Pasha, then, you know, give him everything. They will not grow any teeth. They'll not be able to, you know, you have to also have to have the hard things um, to, to go through, to learn and grow. The only question I have is like, do you think fight is the appropriate word talking about love? Because, you know, like I, I always introduce myself like as a, you know, veteran entrepreneur for 20 years, blah, blah, blah. And my wife's like, veteran has like military context. Like this doesn't fit to you at all, you know, because you're a total hippie. Uh, so she's like. <laughs> I, I, I think for us, we actually use it as a way to provoke hmm. because love uh -huh. often becomes the other side. It becomes all support. Mm -hmm. um, and almost very coddling where we're like, uh, you know, if I love someone, um, I'm going to, I want the best for them. And sometimes the best means I need to bring challenge. And so I'm going to fight for their best, but I'm mm -hmm. fighting for them, not against them. Against them. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. I guess this, this applies for, for team members. This applies for your family, et cetera. It's kind of omnipresent. I love it. Um, I think we have to do another one because I think there's like so many more things we, we can talk about. <laughs> I really appreciate having you on. Um, where can people find you and um, anything you, you want to promote or share? Yeah, so um, for me, it's you know, my name is so hard to spell, but it's jeremykubachuk.com for my speaking. And then uh, giantworldwide.com is uh, a great way if people want to learn more. So those are two places. Obviously, our books are on Amazon. And uh, we have a number of books that people love. And uh, so, David, thanks for, for the chance to be with you. Love it. And super excited to get to, to spend more time. Likewise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, mate.